Recently in Jupiter, Florida, there was a press conference. It was held by Donald Trump. He was giving a victory speech about how he had done in the Republican primaries. He was enthusiastic, bombastic. He was very, very pleased with the results of that night. You're probably not hearing about that because of what Donald Trump said, but more what happened to a Breitbart reporter. Now, Michelle Fields was there covering the event. Now, this is according to her. This is her own words, because she never sought to be a part of the story, which is a little bit suspect when she titles the article, Michelle Fields, in her own words, puts a headshot of herself right below the title, and then below that says, I never sought to be a part of the story. I don't think you could ingrain yourself more into this story if you tried. You're putting up MySpace angled photos of yourself right below the headline, and it's written by you, and it's got your name in the title. Call me a little incredulous, Michelle. But regardless, these, these are her own words. She was at the press event. She didn't get to ask him a question. And as he was leaving with his security and his campaign manager and his staff, she went up to him and she tried to ask him something. And the next thing she knows, she's violently yanked back. Oh, my God. She, she manages to regain her footing. What a brave and strong, independent woman who doesn't need a man. And as she turns around to see who her assailant is, Ben Terrace, a reporter from the Washington Post, tells her that it was Trump's campaign manager. Now, when this story first came out, there was no video, there were no photos, there was no audio. There was simply Michelle's account of what happened and a witness, Ben Terrace. Now, I want to walk through this story before we get to the conclusion, because trust me, you really want to stick to the end of this. I have something that's going to blow your fucking mind. But let's start at the beginning. So there Michelle is. She's at the press conference. She gets horribly assaulted. And Ben Terrace jumps up and he tips his fedora and he says, Malady, it was Trump's campaign manager that did it. I saw everything. And in fact, if you go and read her Breitbart article, at no point in that entire story does she ever actually accuse Trump's campaign manager of assaulting her. She merely reports what the person behind her, Ben Terrace, told her actually happened. Now, the first thing that should strike you about all of this, the first thing that should really stick out, is this is a massive press conference. There are hundreds of reporters there. They are wired for sound. They are wired for video. There are photographers everywhere. And still, we have yet to see one video of this incident occurring. We have no photos of this incident occurring. Now, Politico came out recently, and they, at first, when they put the article up, had a transcription of audio. And it was just, it was saying something that had been recorded, but they didn't actually put the recording up. And the reporter who had published this actually stated on Twitter, they gave the word not to do that. Because, you know, that's what reporters do when they have evidence of an assault take place. They don't put the evidence up for people to judge for themselves. They merely transcribe the audio. Now, why would they do that? Why would they transcribe the audio, but they wouldn't actually put the audio up for you to listen to? Well, let's let's take a listen to it. Let's see what that audio sounds like. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Trump, you went after the late Scalia for affirmative action. Do you still are you still against affirmative action? Thank you. Hey, Ben. Holy shit. Yeah, he just like threw you up. I can't believe he just did that. That was so hard. What? Oh my, was that Corey? Yeah, like what threat were you? That was insane. Yeah. You should have felt how hard he grabbed me. That's insane. Oh my gosh. I've never had anyone do that on the campaign. Can I put it in my story? Yeah, go for it. That was really awful. That's so unprofessional. He really just like almost threw you on the ground. He literally went like this and was like grabbing me down. Like, like I don't even want to do what he just did to me. Oh my god, that like kind of spooked me that someone would do that. What was the th what threat were you? Nothing. I was asking about uh, affirmative action. Like, and he probably knows you, right? Yeah, I don't understand. Like, that looks horrible. <laughs> like, you're going after a bright pro reporter, like the people who are like the nicest to you? I know. I'm gonna put it in my story. Like, literally, oh my god, like, like, I can't even, I can't even write, literally, I cannot even, oh my god. Is this a fucking reporter or a Tumblr blogger? What am I listening to here? Just go back and listen to that audio one more time. Does that sound like somebody who was violently assaulted to you? Can you hear a struggle, a scuffle, an injury take place? Do you hear any crying, any whining, any hint of pain 
and her voice. Any shock in anybody else's voice. No, you hear a gap between her asking her question and not getting an answer, and then them having a conversation, which sounds like gossiping high schoolers. But nonetheless, that is her on the audio, and that is Ben Terrace in the audio, and they are discussing what just took place. And Ben Terrace asks, can I put this in my article? I want to write about this. Now, Michelle has also tweeted out a picture of her horrific injury. I want you to, I want you to take a look at this. I know, that's, that's shocking. That's shocking. Look at that injury. It's almost like somebody rubbed a little bit of pencil lead on their arm. Not saying she faked it. Just a little bit weird that somebody who's claiming to have been assaulted by the manager of a presidential candidate never went to the police or filed a police report. Instead, they went to Twitter to talk about it. I was violently assaulted. Let me not go file a report with the police. Let me tweet about it instead. I don't want to be a part of this story. Yet she goes on to ABC and says shit like this. If you had a chance to talk to Donald Trump right now, what would you say to him? So I would just ask him to just put himself in my shoes and imagine if I was his daughter. Again, a little bit incredulous. A little bit. Just, just a tiny bit. Finding this a little hard to believe. Now, for the past day or two, I've watched multiple news organizations repeatedly come out and condemn Donald Trump, condemn his manager, demand that he be fired, and basically say, listen or believe. And my stance on this has been very simple. I just want to see a video of this taking place. You cannot tell me at a press event there is not one photographer or videographer who would actually have this on film. That, to me, is very, very bizarre. But lo and behold, what happens today? You're, you're going to love this. Buckle the fuck up. I find this photo. This is a photo of the event. As you can see, that's Donald Trump. Behind him and to his left is his manager. Off to his right in the white outfit, the female, that is Michelle Fields. To her left is Ben Terrace. Now he is standing to her left, a little behind her. Now you can imagine as Donald Trump is walking by that uh, she turns to talk to him. So she might be grabbed by behind, and Ben Terrace would be able to see it. Except, there are a few things that should strike you as odd about this right off the bat. The first is, the man directly behind Donald Trump, and to his right, is a Secret Service agent. That is not the manager. The manager is on the other side. He is on the left, not on the right-hand side. So if she were to have been grabbed, it seems that it would be more reasonable for the Secret Service agent to have grabbed her than the manager to have grabbed her. Now, why would I think that'd be more reasonable to assume? Perhaps this. <laughs> That's a Secret Service agent keeping the press in line when they overstep their bound. So it's not like it's unheard of for them to have done this before. But that's not the most striking thing about this photo. I want you to look at the attribution. The Washington Post. Wait a minute. Who was the news organization that was the only witness to this event? Ben Terrace. What did he work for again? Oh, that's right. The Washington Post. So you're telling me the Washington Post had a camera directly on Donald Trump the manager, Michelle Fields, and Ben Terrace, at the exact moment that she was getting ready to ask her question. Look, her arm is out. She's reaching out for him. He's walking by. This is her opportunity to ask that question. This photographer is directly in the perfect spot to be able to see exactly what happened. So who is the photographer? Well, it's Jabin Botsford. Now, you would think that as this media circus has been going on, that one reporter would get off their lazy fucking asses and maybe look into if anybody actually had any video or photographic evidence of the event taking place. But nope, none of them did. Ben Shapiro sure didn't. ABC, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, none of them did. That would be too much work. It's far easier to listen and believe than to actually investigate. So, Jabin Botsford. Well, I wonder, has anybody actually ever directly asked him what took place? Well, yeah, somebody did. I did. I talked to Jabin Botsford, and I'm going to show you exactly what happened when I did. This is the tweet I sent to him on the morning of March 11th. Where is the video photos of the Michelle Fields assault? You were the photog there at the exact time it allegedly happened. And he responded. He responded nearly immediately, within 10 minutes. I wasn't at the event. That was his first response. Now, my follow-up to that was, the attribution here says otherwise. And sure enough, 
the licensing and attribution if you want to use this photo. It actually has his name listed for licensing purposes. So when I sent this to him and then I asked a follow-up question, so why is the photo attributed to you and licensing lists your name on it? His response is this, I didn't hear of or see any assaults at that event. Well, wait a minute. I was a little bit curious after getting that response. I mean, after all, he just said he wasn't at the event. And then followed it up with, I didn't hear or see any assaults at that event. Well, how can he be there to see or hear any assaults if he isn't actually there in the first place? That, that's a little confusing. I was confused. So I responded to him. But you just said you weren't at the event. So were you there or not? Guess what happened? Do you want to take a little guess at what what uh, Jabin here did. He deleted his first tweet. He got rid of the one where he outright denied being there. After all, it's hard to deny being at an event when your name is listed on a fucking copyright and licensing agreement for photos taken there that attribute those photos to you. A little hard to dodge that with all that extra legalese involved. This is the photographer with the perfect angle to see what was happening, filming at the exact moment the incident happened. His first response is to deny even being there, and then when called out on it with irrefutable proof, the licensing and the copyright of the actual photo that's attributed to him. He then follows up with, I didn't see or hear anything, and he deletes his original tweet. Now, does that strike anybody as odd? Because Ben Terrace wrote an article in the Washington Post talking about this assault taking place. Politico published audio that more than likely was gotten through Michelle Fields or Ben Terrace. So how is it that both these news organizations want to talk about this story, would put any evidence they have up in front for anybody to see, yet the man who was at the event who works for the Washington Post, the same Washington Post that Ben Terrace works for and wrote an article talking about this, never gave a statement about what happened, nor did he provide any video or photos of it happening. He has the perfect angle, and yet he's saying nothing and he's not talked about, because nobody got off their ass to go look him up. Because maybe, just maybe, here's a crazy idea. Maybe Ben Terrace doesn't like Donald Trump. Maybe Michelle Fields reached out to ask him a question and the Secret Service shoot her away. And maybe Ben Terrace thought this is a great opportunity to get a good story going. So I'm going to insert this. I'm going to color it up a little bit because nobody's going to say otherwise but we've got to make sure that Jabin doesn't say a fucking thing because that's going to ruin it for everybody well uh uh-oh Jabin I have archives of what you said there they are now I could be completely wrong video could come out tomorrow that shows exactly what's been described Ben Terrace could be 100% right there could have been a brutal assault that took place and it could very well be the manager who works for Donald Trump then again why is it taking so long to get Why hasn't the video been released? Why did Jabba not come forward? Why does he have no photos at the event? Why is it only audio and an audio transcript? Why has Michelle Fields not filed a police report? Why is she going on ABC News and writing articles for Breitbart talking about how she doesn't want to be a part of the story while using her headshot that's basically the size of the fucking page? It smells like bullshit to me. It smells like absolute bullshit took me five minutes on Twitter to get a hold of this photographer. Nobody in the press corps did. Nobody in mainstream media did. You tell me if that doesn't sound like a fucking cover-up to you.